Okay, I want you guys to imagine that you just come home on a typical day, nothing unusual. Mom's in the kitchen making dinner, brothers and sisters are playing, whatever. You're kicking back on the couch watching the news. When all of a sudden, the house really starts shaking. Okay. <laughs> It is the big California earthquake that they've been talking about for years. The one that's going to put Southern California into the ocean. Are you guys prepared? What's happening? The entire infrastructure of Southern California is in shambles. No more grocery stores. The main water supply is just done with. No more emergency med medical response. They're, they're in shambles. Too busy. you got to ask yourself, are you and your family prepared for this kind of surprise or unexpected emergency situation? Are you prepared or are you going to be prepared to let somebody else be prepared for you? Um, the only way that you can really have peace of mind or a sense of security in an emergency situation such as this is to take the steps now to provide for the things that might be unavailable then, things like food, water, medical supplies. You know, you've got to have your first aid kit and your prescriptions. It might not be available afterwards. And a special supply of emergency money preferably in cash because you don't know what's going to happen to the banks after that, just in case. For the ten, past 10 years, the church I belong to, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, has really been pushing its members to become more self-reliant. It's pushing the members to become more financially responsible, get out of debt. You know, people lose their jobs, then they find themselves in a world of hurt, home foreclosures, things like that. They encourage you to develop a uh, supply of food and water for however many days you want, at least a 72-hour kit. Um, and they also recommend uh, being coming, becoming uh, knowledgeable about first aid, just basic stuff, be able to take care of cuts and bruises, broken arms, or CPR, things like that. I mean, recently, my wife and I, we've only been married for a little while, we just recently started taking the recommendations um, and, and really applying them to our lives. We live in a small apartment, so there's not a whole lot of room for food stores, things like that. So we make do. We have uh, canned goods up in the up the cupboards. We have boxes of water under the bed and the coffee table. It's kind of tacky, but at least it's there, just in case. We also recently started saving money more, which is great, since my wife has a tumor in her wrist now. And it, that was an unforeseen financial hit. But luckily, we do have enough to get by to pay our bills. If we hadn't been a little more responsible, we'd have been in a world of hurt. Anyway, so as far as learning about food and water storage, great resource online at foodsafety.gov, um, <coughs> as well as ready.gov. Foodsafety.gov recommends or gives you recommendations on how to take care of it, so after the emergency, it's not contaminated by stuff that's happened. Ready.gov teaches you more about what you need. Um, let's see. It says the recommendations include having enough food for at least three days per member of family. Of course, that's dependent on <coughs> how many members of the family there are, again, the size of the space available. Um, these are things that don't require much preparation or refrigeration, <coughs> things that you just open up real quick, eat. MREs, meals ready to eat, the military uses those, good idea. Have them on campouts, they're not the best thing in the world to eat, but they get by and they're simple and they're easily packed. Um, again, if you're concerned about storage space, it, uh, Again, we live in a small apartment. We have these awesome boxes of water that's supposed to last for five years. Um, there are more resources for water containers at safetycentral.com slash water rations. Um, they have 15 gallon FDA approved water containers, three of which, uh, well not three of which, but my parents have three of these on the side of their house. Those are about $43.99. And again, those boxes of water are about $22. Not really expensive and really valuable in the chance that, you know, water resources and food resources are gone. Okay, moving on to first aid. Everyone should have a first aid kit in the house. Everyone should have one in the car. That's just a must. You never know what's going to happen or if someone needs something. In fact, just now, outside of the school, I'm not sure if you've ever seen him before, but he has a white cane and he's always picking up bottles and stuff like that. He just had this big gash on his leg. He, he's mostly blind. He's looking for his cane because he dropped it somewhere. And I didn't have anything to help. I wish I did. But in situations like that, which would have been really nice, um, to have something close at hand. Um, so if you go to rate.gov, you find a good checklist of things to include your first aid kit, things like uh, bandages, antibiotic ointments, sterilized gloves, prescription drugs, as needed, I need drugs for seizures. So it would be a good idea to have a supply of that around just in case it's not available after an emergency. 
Um, another great idea, get training. Um, learn about CPR. Learn about, uh, what is it called? It's automated external defibrillators. Things like this, you can get training for like 20 bucks online. You can be certified from redcross.gov or .com. Um, and this gives you the means to help your family in case someone else is hurt or your neighbors, if your neighbors hurt in the emergency. Um, there are also great uh, pre-made kits available at redcross.org. For 45 bucks, you get a really awesome uh, three-day adult kit. It has everything you need. I was looking at it. Really nice. But you can save some money if you go out and get it yourself. You can go to most like sporting goods stores, places like that. Collect your own supplies and put it together. Really easy. Um, but as far as finance is concerned, again, my wife, she isn't working right now. We're on disability pay. And that's just not consistent. It is a pain in the butt, and we are really nervous about whether or not we can pay our bills um, at times. Um, there's great advice for taking care of your finances at ProvidentLiving.org. They pretty much recommend that you spend within your means. Don't overextend yourself. It's really easy, especially here in California and in America, to be so dependent on our little plastic money, the credit card. Be careful. Um, again, we see what happens when the economy goes down. People lose their jobs, and then they lose their houses. You know, stuff like that happens. So spend within your means. Um, a quote by one of the leaders of the church says, All too often, family spending is governed more by their yearning than by their earning. They somehow believe that their lives will be better if they surround themselves with an abundance of things. And all too often, all they are left with is avoidable anxiety and distress. That was by Joseph B. Worthlin. Um, so save money. No matter how small it might be, even a dollar or quarter every day, put it aside save it, it'll make that much more difference when you can't access your bank accounts, things like that. Um, so anyways, as far as being prepared for emergencies, benefits, peace of mind. You don't have to be afraid, you don't have to be worried about if you're going to make it, or you don't have to be dependent upon somebody else being prepared for you. Uh, we saw a great example of that in Hurricane Katrina, right? The people had to rely on FEMA. I don't blame FEMA for not being as prepared, they were prepared for X many people, but Sadly, there are more than X. There is X, Y, and Z. Um, at the Superdome, they ran out of food supplies after providing the only 15% of the refugees there. Um, they were really hurting. So that's what I mean about being prepared yourself and not relying on someone else to be prepared for you. Because you just don't know. Um, I think we've all been in situations where we wish that we were more prepared. <coughs> Maybe it was hoping that you practice your speech a little more before class or studying for a test, or maybe you ran out of gas on your way to the graduation because you were too hasty in, in getting ready and just going, you didn't take enough time to get ready. Uh, most of the time these consequences aren't all that severe, but the point is, in an emergency <coughs> situation, it could really mean the difference between life and death. Um, you just don't know. <coughs> so like I said, food storage, um, medical supplies and training, finances. I hope that this speech has encouraged you or persuaded you to go out, see what you have, maybe reconsider your preparation. Are you prepared? Look up some of these websites, ready.gov, providentliving.org, Red Cross, see what it takes. They have great checklists. It makes it really easy and it really doesn't take all that much time. And again, if you're concerned about space, don't be. I mean, my wife and I, again, we're in a small apartment and we're making by, we're making do with what we have. So it's best to know you have what you need by collecting it yourself. Be prepared. That's pretty much it, the best advice I can give. And that's it. Thanks. So Brittany, what did you think? Attention device. Oh, you know what? I gotta stop this.